Well, greetings to you, sisters and brothers, when grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, of course, be with you. And welcome to session number 16 of our 40 Days with James devotion series. Good to have you with us. Again, it's just a gentle reminder that if you've missed any of our first 15 sessions, they're all saved right here on our Facebook page, also over on my YouTube channel. If you ever have any issues, concerns, any problems finding any of our sessions, then let me know and I'll be more than happy to try and, and point you in the right direction. Uh, today is uh, part number three, uh, and last day I think, which we talk about dead faith. If you remember two days ago, we said we're going to start talking about this faith versus works differentiation and, and, and the fact that uh, is James really that much different than what Paul is saying? Are they in fact saying opposite things as sometimes is the accusation? And today's session of hope is going to clear it up even further, although at first it might make it a little more confusing. So let's see what we have in store for session number 16. Here's what we're going to read today. It's uh, still second chapter of James, but now verses 20 through 24. So this is James chapter 2, verses 20 through 24. And James writes this for us. He says, You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does, and not by faith alone. The word of God for you and I, the children of God, thanks be to God. I think it's that last sentence that sometimes gets James a little bit in trouble. He says, you see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. And in fact, it's at that last sentence that our devotion starts for this session. Our writer says, aha, I knew it. I knew it was too good to be true. All this saved by faith alone apart from works business? There it is, plain as day. James says it. We are justified by what we do and not faith alone. Could it be? Have we been wrong about the free gift of salvation all along? Do we really have to work in order to be justified before God? Are we saved by grace plus works? Or is something else going on here? How are we to understand this, along with what Paul says, for example, in Galatians, when he says, we know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law, because by observing the law, no one will be justified. So which is it? Are we justified by observing the law, by what we do, or by faith alone in what Jesus has done? Is it James, or is it Paul? Before we all flee from the faith alone church to one teaching works righteousness, it is worth our time to review what has gone on so far in chapter 2 of James. As we have seen, James is addressing a group of Christians who apparently do not believe they have to be a reflection of God's love. They got their salvation for free, and since they didn't have to do anything to get it, they believe they no longer have to do anything in light of it. This is a dead faith. This is to remain in slavery to sin. The gospel is not an excuse to disobey God's law. Rather, it frees us from the condemnation of the law, so we can freely live according to the law, without fear of condemnation. That is what faith does. And if your faith isn't doing that, James says, then you are not saved. Both Paul and James are saying the same thing. Context is critical here. Paul is addressing Christians who believe there is something they must add to their salvation. These are people who don't believe Jesus is sufficient for salvation. So, Paul tells them, Jesus is all you need. Don't trust your obedience to God's law. Instead, trust Jesus. It is faith alone. Now, James agrees that it is faith alone that saves us, but he is addressing people with the opposite problem. They are abusing the truth of faith alone 
as an excuse to not love God and neighbor. So he must remind them and us in the starkest of terms that faith is never alone. We talked about this yesterday. It is always working in love. In this sense, alone faith cannot justify because faith without love is dead faith. As Paul himself says in 1 Corinthians, if I have the faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, then I have nothing. Salvation is a free gift from God to sinners. Faith alone, in Christ alone, because of God's grace alone, saves you. Salvation is all his doing. And when he saves you, he gives you one very active Holy Spirit to produce fruit in your life. This is busy, active faith indeed. Yes, faith alone saves you, but saving, living faith is never alone. So if you can kind of see the difference there. Paul is addressing a church that thinks they have to do something to be saved. And Paul is saying, it was faith in Christ Jesus alone that saves you. James is addressing a church that doesn't think they have to do a single thing. They don't have to lift a finger to live out the love that Christ Jesus pours into all of us. So that's why he says that a true faith is never truly alone, right? Yes, we are saved by faith alone in Christ Jesus, but part of that faith is an active and working Holy Spirit that encourages us and propels us to do something for our neighbors. That's the difference. They're both saying the exact same thing. It's just because they're speaking to two different churches with two different kinds of problems. That's where that debate sometimes happens between what well, is Paul and James arguing on opposite ends of the same thing, which in fact, they are not. Friends, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I confess that I have used your grace as an excuse to sin. I've tried to make myself feel better for sinning by saying, well, at least I have faith. Forgive me for not expressing my faith in love. Forgive me for not reflecting your love for me. Grant to me a heart of active faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So what's our response to this particular devotion? Well, our devotion writer uh, suggests this. He says, consider offering to clean up around one of your neighbor's houses. Find a neighbor on your street or in your neighborhood whose yard might, could use a little raking here and there, a little help, and go over there and help that particular person. A good way to show the faith or the love of Christ in an action or in a particular activity. Well, friends, as we bring this session to a close, I want to offer to you and ask that you receive this word of grace. Just as faith is never without works, God's promises are never without gifts. He has given you his salvation in baptism. He has given you his promise in the absolution. And he has given you his body and blood in the bread and wine at the Lord's Supper. The God who sends you to act for others works for you in the sacrament. All right, my friends, until we meet again for next session, God bless and take care.